Spoiler warning for Reaper the Genetic Opera. You have been warned. In the film Reaper the Genetic Opera, Blind Mag is both a famous singer and the spokeswoman for the Jinko Corporation. She's notable in this world for both her remarkable singing voice and her prosthetic eyes. As her name hints, Mag was born blind, but could see thanks to future technology. But is the technology used for Blind Mag such a distant dream? Could there be a Blind Mag sooner than we think? Let's break down Blind Mag's eyes. She was born blind. It's not clear what was wrong with her eyes, but they were unusable. Mag's eyes, as seen in the film, are prosthetics mounted into her head. They replaced her natural eyes. This means that the eyes need to be small, fairly lightweight, and generally self-contained. Last but not least, the eyes could do more than see. They could both record images and play them back as short-range holograms. Bionic eyes aren't new. In 2013, two different styles of Bionic Eye were brought to the market, the Monash Vision System and the Argus II. The Argus II was a set of chips and electrodes embedded along the side of an eye. It worked with a camera to translate images into a series of points of light. These points of light were passed on by the electrodes to allow sight. The output looked sort of like a very old black and white handheld game. The electrodes were too big and too simple to produce complex images or color. Unfortunately, Blind Mag doesn't have anything like the Argus 2. For one, there clearly is a camera involved. After all, something has to capture what Mag sees. What if the camera could be the eye? Actually, the Monash Vision System did something like that. The Monash Vision System used a camera mounted to a pair of glasses, a headband, or other gear. The camera transmitted a signal to a wireless transmitter. From there, the transmitter beamed the data through the wearer's skull and into specialized chips implanted in the brain. The brain was stimulated directly. The eye was not used at all. We're getting closer, but we're not there yet. When Mag tears out her eyes, they appear to have been wired into her head. The Monash system is wireless, so that can't be it. Luckily, a wired bionic eye also exists. The Alpha IMS is implanted entirely inside of the head. A tiny camera implanted in the eye relays data to a translation chip. The chip then transmits the data via wire into the brain. What little energy the system uses is transmitted through the skull via a coil planted under the skin. It's a lot like a wireless induction phone charger. We're getting much, much closer. Let's combine the Alpha IMS and the Minash Vision System into Mag's eye. First, we'll need to use the programming from the Minash Vision System to assure that Mag has color vision. Next, we use the camera idea from the Alpha IMS to place the camera directly into a prosthetic eyeball. Implants in her brain receive the information from the cameras via internal wiring. To power the entire thing, we can use an induction coil with wires implanted under the skin, much like the original Alpha IMS. If Blind Mag was real, she could do this right now to be able to see in color. She would still need help to do things like driving, but she could be able to recognize faces. This will let her see that Shiloh looks just like her old friend Marnie. We never directly see through Mag's eyes, so we don't know how good her eyes really are. We only know what holograms her eyes put out. She does have the help of a professional assistant for driving and protection, however. It's very possible that Mag's eyesight isn't quite as good as natural eyes are, which would mean that current technology just may be enough. As Mag's eyes are using cameras to see, it would be simple to be able to record video. The work of recording would be handled by a system on a chip setup. Basically, her eyes would work much like your cell phone. Flash memory would allow for compact storage. Both the system chip and flash memory for saving could easily fit inside our prosthetic eye. Mag's eyes seem to extend a little bit from the back, granting even more space just in case she needs it. The same power going to her eyeball camera would also help power her recording. And how would she trigger the recording to start and stop? She could think it. This sounds far-fetched, but it's already happening. Scientists have implants and brain scans that can detect yes and no answers from locked-in patients. These are people who can't move or communicate at all. That's why they say they're locked in. They're alive, they're not in a coma or vegetative state, but they can't move or communicate. In fact, scientists have gotten so good at this, they can even decode thoughts, like the witness shouted during the trial. A computer did a test in which it left out a random sentence out of 400 sentences. Human readers were asked to fill in the missing sentence. Amazingly, the computer mind-read the correct sentence from the humans 87% of the time. As Mag will already be getting a brain implant for her new eyes to work, adding a second implant during the procedure won't be hard. The implant would simply look for a specific brain pattern that says start recording or stop recording. 
On finishing a recording, she'd be given time to give it a file name. If she does not name the file, it would auto-delete to save space. This is similar to when you close a computer program. From there, she could think something like, Play Marnie Smiling, and the system on a chip would trigger the playback for her. If that feels too far-fetched, she could always use an electrode system to type. Right now, there are bionic arms that can be grafted to the body. Electrodes are implanted in the remaining arm muscles. Whenever the user moves their arm muscles as if they were to move their missing arm, the electrodes pick up the signals. They then translate the signal to the bionic arm to make it move. If Mag had embedded electrodes in an arm, she could flex her arm muscles to send signals to the recording device. This would allow her to issue commands and even type file names without visibly moving anything. Either wires implanted in her body or a small wireless system using the same kind of battery as her eyes could send the signals to the recording and storage devices for her. Last but not least, we have Blind Mag's holograms. Mag's holograms appear to be projected from her eyes. The image appears to be about 2 feet tall and is 3 dimensional. She seems to have a range of about 10 to 15 feet. The equipment doing this fits entirely inside of her prosthetic eyes. Although there's music in the scene, it's unclear if it's background music that's just something we can hear or if it's music that's actually in a world. As this is a musical, I will assume it's music only we can hear and we'll leave it out. After the marvel of Blind Mag's recording devices, a hologram seems simple. In many ways, it really is simple. There is a holographic projector called the Quantum Photonic Imager. It's about the size of a cell phone camera and can produce 3D images. These images can be about 2 feet tall. It wouldn't be hard to add one to a prosthetic eye. Not much in the way of energy is needed, which would allow it to use the same power source as everything else on MAG. From there, the simplicity ends. Usually holograms are projected onto fog or a wall of water. MAG's ghosty projection appears to be floating on fog. Unless Shiloh's home is naturally very foggy, this would pose a problem. During the scenes in which Mag uses her holograms, she doesn't appear to be using anything else. Her mouth is closed, so she's not breathing out a fine mist for the hologram to land on. Holograms can't exist without something to project on. The light will just shoot out in beams and never form a picture. If blind Mag were real, she would need something like an electronic cigarette she could use for a portable source of fog. The other issue is fitting the quantum photonic imager into her eye with the normal camera. Right now, the imager and the camera are about the same size. The camera must be at the back of Mag's eyeball directly across from the iris, or else she won't be able to see correctly. Most of Mag's eye is opaque except for the iris. Or is it? When Mag uses her holograms, her eyes light up. This means that light is being partially blocked by her eyes. More than that, they turn practically white as if going transparent for light to beam out of them. That looks a lot like a one-way mirror. One-way mirrors look like normal mirrors at first glance. However, when you shine a light out of the back side of a one-way mirror, it causes the mirror effect to disappear. As long as the space behind the mirror is as bright or brighter than the other side, you can see behind it. The reason why her eyes turn white and glow when light is shined from behind them is because the back of the eyeball is opaque white. We are seeing what's back there because it's being lit up. If blind Mag's eyes are a one-way mirror glass, it would explain why they look so unnatural. It would also explain why they're so reflective. One-way mirrors can even be different colors, like blue. As a bonus, if blind Mag's eyes are made of one-way glass, the imager could be mounted almost anywhere in the back of the eyeball with little impact on how the light will exit the eye. Putting it all together, we have a modern marvel. Combining existing implant and camera technology allows Blind Mag to see well enough to get around on her own and recognize her friends. Modern batteries and wireless charging keep her equipment going. The same technology that allows your cell phone to record a video would also allow Blind Mag to record a video. Bleeding edge implants would allow her to save and load files with her thoughts or just a couple twitches of her muscles. A miniature holographic projector aided with an electronic cigarette would allow her to project holograms almost anywhere. And her artificial eyes are made of one-way mirror glass for that authentic future tech look without sacrificing any functionality. Blind Mag may be a character from a film set in the future, but she could actually exist today. All she would need is someone with a lot of wealth to back her. Someone like Roddy Largo. <laughs>